Welcome to the spookiest episode. It's the Curse of Threadbare review. But first, let's take a look at the setup for today because it has gotten a little bit spooky. Over here, Vanny and Vanessa have been replaced by a... Uh, <clears throat> Hi, how are you? A SpongeBob, but you know it's expected at this point. Then we've got some spooky jack-o'-lantern friends who have joined us. And then there are... Hi, how are you? <clears throat> well, uh... Hi, how, how are, are you? you? There are more SpongeBobs, but you know we uh, we we can't we can't uh, we can't have everything we want, right? And as a reference to yesterday, we have the tags from a few old plushies. Now, time for the review. But first, let's turn on a light. Aha! Uh -huh. Oh, that's better. I can actually see now. I feel different. Wait, hold on. That was really weird. What the hell? Hold on. Ugh. Okay, well, okay then. All right guys, so welcome to day three. Today is the Dreadbear Review. We are going to be reviewing these five figures and their plushy counterparts. All right, without any further ado, let's just jump right in. And we're gonna start with our good old friend Dreadbear, AKA the one that the entire wave is named after. So this wave actually came out in 2021. I believe it came out towards the start of the year, something like that, but I, have never owned these figures before. As we said with the FNAF 1 figures, those were things I used to have, um, but I uh, got rid of them, I sold some of them and whatnot, and so it wasn't really like I was opening anything new, but this wave is actually like I am opening something new because, well, it is new to me. I've never owned these. So I'm looking forward to seeing what these figures are like. Okay, so I've given up all hope trying to savor these boxes after the FNAF 1 video where I practically made them, you know, rendered irrelevant. So I have decided I'm not going to try to save these anymore. I'm just gonna get the figures out. So the one thing to notice is that this wave does not have a Build-A-Figure, which is quite unfortunate. I always love the Build-A-Figures. I think they easily could have done one this wave. They easily could have just remade Jacko Chica, you know, made her in the same style as the Jacko Bonnie figure. But no, no Build-A-Figure. There's also not any props that come with any of these characters. Dreadbear himself does not have a microphone or anything of the sort. All right, so the Dreadbear figure, already off the bat, feels a lot different than the other figures. He feels almost rubbery. Hold on, I need to smell this. Yeah, he smells like rubber, which is very different. If you know like a rubbery texture, kind of like a tire, uh, he still feels very strong, but it's not hard plastic like the other figures are. This is like a rubbery figure. Very interesting. Another thing to note, doesn't really have much of a neck, so you can't really position it, but you can turn his head. Then I just noticed moving it, his ears do bend. He feels like the, the Twisted Ones mystery minis. If any of you have those, they're a little bit rubbery feeling, but he's not hollow, it's very hard still. All right, so right off the bat, very poseable, easy to move joints, they all stay in place. Since he doesn't have any uh, sort of accessory, he's pretty easy to position and just stand. Um, Let's see, do these limbs fall off pretty well? They do, but that didn't, that, I mean, I, you know, that was me trying to pull it off. So far, none have fallen off. Let me shake them a little bit. Let me do the, the smash test. Um, yeah, pretty good, pretty solid figure. Now let's take a look at the plushie. So this has been out for a while, as well as, the, as well as the figure. So it's not like you guys are seeing anything new, but to me, it's pretty new. So right off the bat, his hat is tiny. Look at how small that is. That is very weird. Um, the eyes and the big like eyebrow, I don't, I don't know what you call that. It's, they're all just like crocheted. Uh, lines, which is okay. I prefer the 3D eyes that are stuffed and stick out a little bit, but you know, it's all right. He looks cool. I'm glad they added these little touches of like the bolts on the side of his jaw. The bow tie is good. It's a lot smaller and it feels a lot harder than the normal bow ties do. One thing I want to note is that they've made the bow ties more of like round shapes rather than triangles, which is a little bit interesting. The details down here look good. Nothing is printed on this guy. I know a lot of people don't like printing. I'm actually getting used to it. 
now that I realize it, the lines on the teeth are printed. But that's the only thing, and there's nothing really wrong with printing, if you ask me. Uh, it can help you add good details, and if it's just one, you know, a few little lines like that, it shouldn't be much of a problem. Uh, I also want to say, I still see these in GameStop a lot. So I recommend you guys buy them while you can, because they're probably going to be out of stock soon now that the new wave is coming out. So if you are on the fence, I say go for it. Next up is Jack O'Bonny, and since we also have the Jack O'Chica plush, but there's no Jack O'Chica figure in this wave, I'm just going to review the plush after as well as the Jack O'Bonny plush. So let's take a look here. Right off the bat, if you have the Jack O'Chica figure, you know that it is not translucent like that. So that's already pretty cool. That's a big difference. Um, no props, nothing, no Build-A-Figure. So I definitely will say this wave is just for the amount of stuff you're getting is probably less, it's a worse value than the, the older waves. So if you ask me, if you're gonna buy a whole wave of figures, buy wave one, because those are the cheapest ones out right now, besides these, and they come with a Build-A-Figure, which is, you know, really cool. Yeah, okay, destroying these boxes now. Absolutely just ruining any chance I have at saving these. Okay, so here we go, we have to reassemble him now. So, okay. And okay. All right, so here's the Jack O'Bonny figure. All right, I'm a little bit mixed on this one. I'm not a fan of how he has the black holes all over his body when he clearly should be glowing inside. I think it would have been a good, ch good touch if they just made these holes yellow instead of black. Uh, it's also interesting that his body is translucent, see-through, but the, the limbs are not. Uh, the head is, but the ears are not. So a little bit strange there. Once again, posability is really good. Compared to the FNAF 1 figures that we did the other day, these are super posable. Um, really good quality too. Let's do the stand test. I mean, basically all these can stand. I will say though, his his legs feel really loose. So it might, you know, it might be a little bit of an issue, but it seems okay. Also, I just noticed his nose is gone, which is a cool touch. Now let's do the Jacko plushies. Uh, these are cool. Um, I would say a little bit underwhelming, even though we've been wanting Jacko characters for a while. These are a little bit underwhelming. A lot of printing. Um, a lot of just, all the details are flat since everything's printed. I mean, one of his eyes is printed. It's a little bit weird. Um, I also think it's weird uh, that they have these white pupils. If I'm not mistaken, I don't think the Jackos have whites in their eyes. They just have empty yellow uh, glowing holes. So a little bit strange. Another thing to note is that these are literally recolors of Twisted Chica and Twisted Bonnie, which is very weird. Uh, they could have easily just recolored Nightmare Bonnie, which they've made before. But I guess since Chica, there was no Nightmare Chica, they decided to just do the Twisted Ones. I think that it's still good. They're official game characters from the original, you know, six games. I think it's worth getting these guys. Maybe a little bit more than the other ones in the wave, honestly. So if you're on the fence, go for it. Now let's do Grim Foxy. This is an original character from FNAF VR, similar to Dreadbear. Um, this character is from the Corn Maze minigame, as well as when you die in Curse of Dreadbear, he, you can see him behind you, and he's scraping his sickle on the fence, or at least the brick wall by the fence. Not really a huge fan of this character. I tend to think that two Jacko characters is enough. I also don't really like that he's not called Jacko Foxy. Kind of feel like he should have been called that. I just think it's weird that we have a Freddy, a Bonnie, a Jacko Chica, and a Foxy, but the Foxy, I don't know. He's the odd one out. I just think it's a little bit strange. They could have just called him Jacko Foxy. I would have liked him a lot more. Now. Let's see if this character, or at least this figure of this character, will make me like him a little bit more. Like I just said, not a huge fan of Jacko Foxy. Probably my least favorite character in this whole wave, but we'll have to see. Okay, so 
Just like the other Jackos, he is a recolor of Nightmare Foxy. The only differences are he has some big spikes on his shoulders. Uh, both his ears have been completely stripped of any kind of fabric or, you know, fox-related um, fur. Now it's just metal. And he has a huge sickle instead of a hook, which looks really cool. Once again, can't turn the hooks. Don't know why they do that. You could easily make the hooks turnable. I just think that's such a missed opportunity. I'm a huge fan of the position his hand is in. I do not like the figures that just have these flat hands. I mean, there's no props for him to hold. Why does he have that position? But no, Foxy has like this grabbing position. So you can, you can make it look like he's reaching for someone. You can make it look like he's cackling like... <laughs> and you can, you know, scratch, I mean, anything. So great hand position, already a plus. I'm a huge fan of these robotic feet. I really want to see someone make a custom mangle figure out of all the robotic pieces that we've gotten from all these figures. Side note, but if anyone has done that, please link it in the comments. Um, one thing I did not mention with the other ones, but you can't turn the waists. I, I, I mean, come on, look at that metal bar going through his body. That's the perfect opportunity to put some sort of little swivel joint. You can't do it with him. Oh, you can do it with Bonnie. So why can you do it with Bonnie? You can't do it with him. Can you do it with Dreadbear? No, you can't. So why not? <laughs> Funko, why not, huh? Why? I'd love to know. I'm dying to know. Really, tell me. Jokes aside though, I may not like him as a character, but I think he looks really cool as a figure. A little bit weird on the coloring, once again, you've got these black holes in his limbs, and then the glowing translucent body it looks a little bit off, but you know what, I can live with it. I think he looks cool, and especially seeing them all together is even cooler. Let's do the plush of Grim Foxy. It is okay. Um, it's a Twisted Foxy recolor. Once again, recoloring the Twisted animatronics. No idea why he does not have teeth on his top jaw. And the teeth on his bottom jaw are barely visible. There's none in the front. Well, I guess there are, but they're so buried by the lip or the actual jaw piece that you can't see them. Very weird. Uh, probably one of my least favorite FNAF plushies ever made, if I'm being completely honest. I'm, I'm, I just have no interest in this. I have no care for this. Um, it's not bad. It, it, it works for what it is, but just kind of misses the point, if you ask me. It's not really cute. It just looks weird. There's no eyes. There's no expression. There's no cuteness to it. It just looks like this weird snout with no bottom jaw, but the jaw is there. It's just so far back. It doesn't look right. Something's off about this. <laughs> I, I'm going to give this one a 2 out of 10. I guess. <laughs> so before we do the last one, let's do Glitch Trap. Now there's no plushie of Glitch Trap, so that's why we're sneaking him in before the final plushie and figure. And I must say, I am excited for this. If you don't know much about the FNAF VR lore, this guy is the main villain of the game. And he kind of is the main villain of Security Breach too. If you haven't played FNAF VR, I recommend you go watch Daco's explanation video for FNAF VR because it is some of my favorite FNAF lore in the whole series. It's so cool. Um, so Glitch Trap, I'm really excited for. I also want to say it's completely dog that we have not gotten more merch of this guy. I mean, come on, he's the main character of FNAF VR. Uh, no plushie of him, really. I mean, come on. All right, let's get him out. And okay, we, we lost an arm and a leg. I always think, you know, this is the uh, thing we're gonna be looking for in, from now on. If a figure comes out of the packaging without losing a limb, it's probably a good sign that they're a good figure. But I still think this one is really cool. Wow, it, it's so weird seeing him in real life. I mean, there's no merch of this guy and the game has been out for like two or three years now and he is the main villain. There's gotta be more merch, come on. All right, so uh, already loving this figure. I do wanna say it seems a, like his joints are really far apart. Um, 
I think the thing that makes it look weird is that he's not a robot in the game, he's a suit, so there wouldn't be a metal gap here. Um, so maybe they could have made these joints uh, yellow, which would have added the effect, at least, that it's a fully yellow arm, not just a robotic, uh, some robotic sections put together. But other than that, I think he looks really good. Um, one more downside, I think the brown, they added a lot of like dirt and brown to him, and I just don't know if it's working. He's not really that dirty in game. I think he did, would have looked fine if he was just solid yellow and looked clean. All right, so I've done my best to try to put him in his iconic pose where he's like waving and he's standing to the side like that. That looks pretty cool. I don't know about you guys, but I'm, I'm a big fan of that. Okay, but seriously, how does he not have a plush out of all the waves? I mean, not even a mystery mini. All right, well, this is my favorite one so far. Sorry if I didn't say very much, but he's a great figure. I love him. He's my favorite one so far. But that being said, we've only got one to go. We've got Captain Foxy. All right, and then we've also got the Captain Foxy plush, but we're gonna do the figure first as usual. Of course, I wasn't recording when it happened, but when I pulled him out of the box, no limbs fell off, so that's a good sign, like we said. All right, first of all, big cloak. I expected this cloak to be like rubbery, and it is, but it's a lot stiffer than I expected, so that's very interesting. It's also cool to notice, you can still see his normal foxy clothes underneath the figure. And I do wonder uh, if anyone has tried this, if you've pulled the cloak off, how much of it is still foxy underneath or does it not work? I don't know why anyone would try that, but I, I just wanna know, because I'm curious. All right, can't turn the hook as expected. Funko, the day you make the hooks turnable is the day that, um, well, I, I'll be in shock that you did it. I'll be impressed. I'll be mildly amused. You also cannot turn the hand, which is very weird. Funko, why not? <laughs> okay, so good posability. The shoulder pads make it a little bit hard to move his arms. You can't move them any further than that because of the shoulder pad. It'll probably fall off, which is too bad. Um, he's also got the big pirate hat, which looks really good. I think this figure isn't really meant to be played with because you can't really do too much with it. It also seems to be very top heavy because he has these tiny little legs and then this huge hulking body with this big cloak. It might be a little bit hard to pose him, uh, or I mean to play with him and keep him standing upright. But right now, it seems to be working just fine. Also, we talked about in the FNAF 1 figure review that the restock Foxy was a dark, nice red. Well, this Foxy is the old orange, so they actually used the old orange color for him, but the restock Foxy has the new dark maroon color. All right, I'm actually filming this at the end, but it's gonna be somewhere in the middle of the video. <laughs> I forgot to review the Pirate Foxy plush. Um, forgive me, it's literally like, 11 or 12 in the at night right now because I wanted to do the whole spooky gag. So I'm a little bit tired, but uh, yeah, here's the Pirate Foxy plush. He's a Walmart exclusive, just like the figure. Um, and he's good. I think he's good. I say get him. Um, a little bit weird that they didn't just use the normal Foxy head. They use this weird like rock star Foxy head with no uh, cheeks or anything, but not too bad. The whole body is printed, but you know, what can you do? I like that they added these little uh, collar pieces instead of printing those on. I love the hook, looks good. The hat is like one flat piece, but it's better than nothing. He even still has a little tuft of hair, so they definitely did not not try with this figure. They did try, so good figure, or uh, good plush. I'm tired. So pretty quick review today. Not too many insightful moments or anything. I was mainly just hoping to unbox these and give my first impressions. I do really like them. I think it's always nice. I welcome more and more merch, especially ones of real characters, not just black lights and glow in the darks and whatever else Funko decides to recolor. But yeah, this is the wave. So let me do the figures from worst to best in my opinion. In my opinion, the worst figure is Jack O'Bonnie. 
unfortunately he's my least favorite which is too bad because he is actually in my top three favorite FNAF characters of all time just because of his design but his fi his figure is not my favorite I mean if you look at I don't think the translucent did him any favors I just think it looks a little weird so yeah unfortunately he's the worst next up I am putting, oh, this is hard. Next up, I think it's actually gonna have to be Dreadbear. Now, he does look good, okay? There's nothing bad about this figure. It's just he's next because, well, I like the other ones more. <laughs> he's a good figure, I say buy him. He definitely feels a little bit rubbery though, a little weird. And then next up, I would say buy Grim Foxy. He's really good. I may not like this character in the game, but this pose his hand is in, as well as the really cool details all over his body, like the freaking sickle. And I'm a huge fan of how these ears are done. They're not just printed on stripes in the ears. They're actually little bars that are uh, that have holes between them. Looks really good. I recommend getting this one. But the best one of the wave is the exclusive. But wait, there's one more. The best one of the Dreadbear wave is the exclusive, but the best figure of the whole wave is Glitch Trap. I actually just forgot to put Glitch Trap in. <clears throat> anyway, this is my favorite one, okay? I love Glitch Trap. I think he looks great. I think it's such a huge deal that they made his uh, hands in the right position to do this weird little pose he does. I think it's really cool. His ears are a little bit bendy, it feels like, but I wouldn't recommend moving those too much. They're probably gonna fall off. All right, and as far as plushies go, I would say all of them are worth getting. I don't think there's any FNAF plushies that aren't worth getting, especially if you're a collector. I just say get them because they're gonna be rare one day. Literally every FNAF plush has become rare at some point and worth money. So you might as well pick them up while they're still in stores for retail price. The only one I think is absolutely just not worth it is this one. I don't think this figure, this plush will ever be worth anything. It's just, it's so boring. I don't see anything interesting about this. Um, I guess buy it if you want it, but it's, it's, it's okay, I guess. So this is the lineup we're looking at for today. Thank you so much for watching the review. I hope you had something to enjoy in this video. It wasn't the, you know, most amazing review ever. <laughs> like I said, I have been forgetting to do a lot of things because I'm tired, but I hope you guys enjoyed. Join me tomorrow for day four, where we're going to be looking at... <laughs> unless, I, uh, unless I find something better to do. All right, thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you tomorrow.